is always a new buzzword or a new spin being put on childhood sleep training. People try to call it something else for fear of negativity of the term sleep training. There are some new ideas out there that suggest behavioral intervention, which is a term used for the services that sleep consultants provide, is actually old fashioned and potentially harmful, but they are really referring to ideas dating back to the 1950s rather than the modern day evidence-based responsive plans most sleep consultants actually offer these days. I guess it's all for marketing hype and I'm not one to tear others down in order to get ahead. I believe different ideas suit different people. I also feel passionately about removing the fear, guilt or worry many parents have about sleep training and want to raise awareness about the importance of doing something about a lack of sleep in families. I went live on my social media channels on this topic and had an overwhelming response about it, so I thought I'd put together this special episode to help share this message with more people. So here you go, and I hope you enjoy. And the, anything, anything that requires a conscious effort to change something is, is going to be a form of training, okay? So, you know, if you're, if you're training in the gym, if you're, you know, training to learn something, you're going through a set of processes to get to a result. So if you're helping a baby or young child to do better with their sleeping, it's, and you're consciously doing that, you're consciously going through some steps to do that, um, it's a kind of training. <laughs> and it's, um, I think it's a shame that you know, not everybody, of course, but a certain amount of people or a certain type of person has um, a, a kind of a negative connotation around the idea of sleep training. And I just don't understand why or where that's come from. And it frustrates me so much because I think it just feeds into what already is a really high pressure world of, of motherhood and mum guilt. I mean, Honestly, I think that the pressure on mums is bigger today than probably ever before, or at least it's more talked about, <laughs> let's face it. So when we um, suggest or when people get ideas that sleep training, and I'm talking like they just bracket this whole big thing of sleep training being, you know, just a thing, is somewhat, if that's in any way a bad thing or, you know, or put seeds of doubt in people's minds that they might be doing something negative, it's just a whole nother bit of motherhood pressure that you don't need. Um, I just think it's unnecessary, I really do. I think anything that puts unnecessary uh, guilt or worry on mums is just unnecessary. <laughs> and the problem is, you see, there are too many mums, I've been there myself, who are sleep deprived and suffering as a consequence of that sleep deprivation or the family is suffering or the child is suffering and it can get pretty serious and um, you may or may not have been to the, the you know the depths of sleep deprivation as i call it um but there are lots of people who have and that will relate to this but we do speak to people daily who are feeling the pains of sleep deprivation i'm talking um, marriages on the rocks. So I've had somebody say to me, if we don't do this, it's going to be divorced. Like I've, I've literally had somebody say those words to me. And um, my response was, well, divorce is going to cost you a lot more <laughs> than a sleep training program. So, you know, I, I've had people say that. I've had people say, oh my gosh, I've got to do something about this because I'm literally nodding off in the car and that's risking mine and my children's lives. So you can't just muddle through when it's getting that serious and it does get that serious for some people. And that's not to say, you know, falling apart marriages and potential fatal accidents, if that's not serious enough. There are other levels of this and the most common ones are depression, anxiety, all those things are worse than sleep deprivation. Sorry, it's noisy. I opened the window because it's such a lovely day. Um, but yeah, it, it, those things are heightened. Those feelings of depression and anxiety and stress are heightened when you're sleep deprived. That's science. That's a fact. Um, if you are a depressed and frantic and anxious mother, that's going to rub off on your children. Um, it again isn't necessary and that's why I always talk about our, our vision and our mission is to end 
unnecessary sleep deprivation. Of course, newborns are gonna come with an element of sleep deprivation for you. They are, because they're gonna wake in the night and they're gonna need some help. I know, we're not trying to pretend that's not the case. But when it becomes unnecessary, when you have you know, um, a two-year-old who's waking up every hour in the night, for example, that's seriously unnecessary. <laughs> um, even, you know, even a six-month-old that's waking up two, hour, two hourly in the night isn't necessary. They could, not should, but they could be sleeping a lot better. And why wouldn't you want that for the health and the well-being of the whole family? So, as you can probably tell, it's something I'm very passionate about. If it wasn't, I wouldn't have been in this business for so long. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it pains me when I see marketing tactics and new ideas of a um, oh, yeah, yeah, very holistic and natural approach to getting children to sleep without using sleep training. I really get irritated by that, not because of what, are those, what those people are doing. I think the work they're doing is brilliant, and I think the services they offer are brilliant, but I think that they are suggestive that the services that the rest of us offer are somehow bad or damaging because we don't use those newfangled type terminologies. I don't use them because I don't feel the need. You know, I'm very open and completely transparent about the fact that we promote um, responsive sleep training, as in your child will be responded to. We will not tell you to ignore your baby or your child. We, we, you know, that's if you want to just put your baby down and ignore them, you don't need an expert to tell you to do that. Likewise, if you want to just rock and feed your baby to sleep for years or for however long, you don't need anyone to tell you to do that either. You'll just do it. So if you are at either end of that, that spectrum, crack on, be happy. <laughs> but if you're looking for a solution, if you have a problem and you're looking for a solution, if you're in that bracket, then yeah, what we do and what so many people out there that I know do, evidence-based, science-based, it, it works. And we help parents to find the right solution for them because the thing that's going on with the child and um, sometimes the mindset and the stuff that's going on with the parent needs some addressing and it needs some work. But we help to dig into that and to find what the parent needs, what the child needs and therefore what the solution is. And it's tailored and it's bespoke and it's always responsive. So, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not here to sort of preach about that or like this is what we do, but what I guess I'm saying is that when I see these things pop up that say, you know, sleep training and, and literally give it a bracket is bad, is negative, is based on ideas from the 1950s. <laughs> it's not. There are some ideas from the 1950s, believe me, but they're not what we use. Um, but, you know, if, if you know, to just say that sleep training is forcing little ones into routines and into structures that aren't right for them, if it's not right for them, we wouldn't do that. If it is right for them, we would do that because it's bespoke and it's responsive. You're not going to leave a child alone. You're going to respond to meet their needs. You're going to respond to meet the objectives to help everyone be healthier and happier. So when people use that marketing tactic, it just irritates me. It's like, uh, it shouldn't irritate me, <laughs> should it really? It really shouldn't. But the ultimate thing is, is when somebody is saying that, what they're saying is, but we'll give you sleep training in this way. It's still sleep training. It's still sleep training. It's still a training. I've purchased these courses, by the way. I've purchased these programs. I know exactly what the content is. And it's still a form of saying, um, okay, so do this and do this and do this and do that consistently. That's still training. It's a different style of training, but it's still training. Um, some of the ideas I think are great. Some of the ideas I think are completely so far off the mark that it, it will make sleep worse. But that's a whole nother topic. Um, at the end of the day, sleep training is sleep training. It's a, a way to help parents to help their children to sleep better. And it is a counterintuitive topic. Sleep is a counterintuitive topic. The very fact that the more overtired a child is, the more chance there is that they're gonna wake up early in the morning and be wired and then be overtired 
and grisly and probably quite annoying. <laughs> um, that's weird because you would think, and somebody said that to me just this week um, on a message and somebody was saying, oh yeah, I wondered if they were, what did she say? She was saying about, I wonder if they were overtired, but um, oh, I can't remember what it was, but it was something about, Oh, that's right. She said, I, I thought they might be overtired, but then I thought if they're overtired, they'll just sleep longer than 5am. And I'm like, no, I know exactly right. That's it. That's what logic would tell us. That's what intuition would tell us. We would think that. We would think, oh, this child shattered. We've thoroughly worn them out all day long. The sleep pressure, which is a term you're probably hearing bettered around now. It's kind of the in term. The sleep pressure has built up to the point that this child is ready now for a big old sleep, but then bang, they're awake or they're just disturbed in their sleep because they're overtired. I know more and more parents are getting to grips with that concept of, um, you know, sleep breeds sleep um, and so on. But uh, yeah, it, yeah I, I just had to share this. <laughs> um, thanks for the comment. Recky, um, love you. She's on here. Totally makes sense, Lucy. I love your book. Gives a great range of techniques for different families and children. And sleep is so important for child growth and development too. You are spot on, Recky. Um, so good to see you there on, on, on the live feed. Um, absolutely. If you want to know more about this, I've, I've actually um, shared a video on our YouTube channel this week on this topic. Um, it's there on the YouTube channel. You can search YouTube, just search my name, Lucy Shrimpton, and you'll see the channel. Um, and there is, it's on the IGTV as well, on Instagram and on Facebook. So <laughs> you can find it. Uh, but I just thought there's nothing like coming live and just unplanned and just talking about this topic and um, I'd love to hear from you so on the topic of I haven't got time to answer everyone's sleep problems today but on the topic of um no sleep training or sleep training as a concept I'd love to see in the comments if you have any thoughts on that does the idea of sleep training scare you have you heard bad things about it do you think it's the best thing ever and it's changed your life like I'd love to hear from you in the comments um, now, if you can type fast enough, um, or later, if you're watching this back after the live and you watch it back later on, um, please do share. I'll, I'll, I always look back at the comments and I'd love to know your thoughts because I would love to be a force for positivity around getting help with sleep. I think it's, um, there's just too much scaremongering, there's too much negative talk, there's too much mum guilt. And, and that's the other thing, I have to say this, some of the marketing I see for these, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, to be honest, what we do is holistic as well, but um, these very holistic or uh, very naturally nurturing, um, naturally incurring techniques like do basically the the programs that say do what comes naturally just hold your baby to sleep just feed them to sleep just do whatever you want to do it's fine the thing that I think is dangerous about that messaging um, a couple of things one it's um, effectively it's letting parents off the hook kind of giving them an excuse, oh, it's okay, oh, I can just do that, when actually doing that could be really hindering them. It could be hindering their child's development. It could be leaving them in a state of such awful sleep deprivation. It could be dangerous. So one, it could, it could do that, when actually that's a person that really knows they do need to take some action and not keep doing that. So it could be, not every case, but I'm saying it could be. And the other thing, so it could let, you know, it could kind of let them off the hook. But the other thing is, it can ultimately reinforce the mum guilt thing because it it suggests that, oh, okay, if I don't do it that way, um, I'm a bad mother. Or or the flip side, it's just it just I just don't see any any good in it. I really don't. Um I'm talking about the more so sort of the marketing and the messaging that I see, not the actual essence of the thing. There'll be people who uh, that sort of training, that very intuitive approach of just going with the flow, there'll be people that that's perfect for. And I'm not, so I'm not dissing it. There'll be people that it's perfect for. But this is why I'm, a, um, I'm an all for all kind of person. There's a right way for everybody. There'll be people that that's perfect for. I'm not entirely sure. I would purchase that because I'd just do it 
<laughs> I don't think you need to be told that. You could probably just read um, a very short book or a leaflet and you could just do your own thing. Um, so that's not really a program. It, it, what we do is we help people that are stuck. So you have you have gone with the flow and you have tried to just go with nature and you have tried to do everything with just your instincts, but it's not working and you are not in a good place and you need things to be better for your health, your sanity, your child's development, your life. Um, so we're here to help those people, people who are stuck and it's important to them. And on the other end of the scale, you have people who go, oh, just put them down and you know they'll cry for a bit but it's okay they nod off eventually and they don't really need me and that's fine too if that works for you and you're happy i'm not going to criticize you you make your own choices everybody should make their own choices and not judge other people's <laughs> anyway that's my little rant over i'm going to just check out the comments um on Facebook and Instagram, so bear with me. Uh, Reggie's still here with me on Facebook saying, yes, love sleep training and reducing sleep quotas. It was very gentle, but we practiced your techniques in the early days and wasn't too painful. We are all more human for it. Life is so demanding and being sleep deprived was painful. He's 14 months now and I'm always referring back to your book as these little people change all the time. They do change all the time. I say that to my clients. They'll be like, where are your child sleeping through the night? Everything's amazing. And then a few months down the line, they hit a milestone. And they're like, oh God, what's happened? But I always remind them, I've taught you how to overcome these bumps. They're going to come up, but as long as you know how to navigate them, you'll get back on, on track really quickly. Um, okay, we've got quite a lot of comments on Instagram. Let me see here if we got. I sleep, uh, lucky eight PR. I sleep trained my first two children successfully, but just tried with my youngest and it was a disaster. Oh gosh, well see, what that might mean is that your youngest needs a different approach. Um, different personalities often require different approaches and life's different now. There's two older children around, you know, life and your dynamics and the patterns and your routines are probably different now. Um, it, it can be like that. I remember a lady, she had five children. I always tell this story about the lady with five children because it was her fifth, the littlest one. And she said, oh, Lucy, I don't know what, what's going on. I have had no problem with the other four. We did this, this and this. It was all fine. What's, what am I missing with this one? And it was just that that one was a different little guy. He just needed a different approach. So we made some changes. We, we set it all up within, that was quick. I think it was like within about three days, this toddler if I remember rightly, he was around 18 months, um, maybe 21 months, something like that. He um, happily was going off to bed and, and it solved everything. And she's like, well, I don't, I don't understand. I was thinking it just, he just needed a different approach from you. Um, uh, f is it Farrison? I think the term sleep training is associated strongly with controlled crying, yeah, which has been researched and shown to negatively impact babies and children. Not entirely true. So yes, I agree. And sadly, I think sleep training as a term does get associated with controlled crying um, because it suggests that, yeah, you're gonna train them to cry and fall asleep. Um, the thing that's not correct about this is controlled crying has not been researched and shown to negatively impact children. There is no research that says controlled crying negatively impacts children, there isn't. Um, control crying, there's a massive spectrum of control crying. Um, I don't, I, I have my own variation because I think the term itself just conjures up negative ideas. I'm mm, going to control where my child cries, like I just don't really like the term anyway. But um, some people think that controlled crying means you leave your child to cry indefinitely. Some people think control crying means you leave your child to cry in intervals. Those intervals in some people's minds might be two minutes and in other people's minds might be 20 minutes. There's, which, in, in, and it, or it could be um, staggered like ferber, ferberizing and that approach. So, and there's no evidence to say that the ferber approach is damaging. There's no research to say, oh yeah, all these children that, that went through the ferber method, that, yeah, they're psychologically damaged. None at all. What there is research to show is that unattended prolonged crying on a regular basis can lead to 
problems later on can lead to, to you know the brain making these connections that you know they're about of abandonment and and other issues like that prolonged unattended crying on a regular basis so i'm talking about a child that's being you know put down um is crying seeking some sort of response and not getting it for you know an hour if not at all regularly you know every day that is where the research is um exactly says um somebody there i think rachel ross um yeah it, and and i'm not disagreeing with you uh Farriston. it's is it Farriston? yeah uh i think so it is associated sometimes with control crying which is unfortunate but what is control crying you know that is a blog topic what is control crying <laughs> because what one person thinks it is is completely different to what another person thinks it is there we go um it saved my sanity with my first two. They both were happier having had full night's sleep and both are happy, contented kids now. I don't believe they've been negatively impacted. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, I, I agree. And, and I see so many... Uh, I think parents are more um, attentive than ever these days. And... Um, yeah, you're, you're not seeing how, you know, how many 10, 12, 14, 16 year olds um, do we see who are like, oh no, you can tell they were sleep trained. <laughs> it's like, no. Um, sleep training has many approaches. I think there needs to be more clarity on sleep training. Um, is more vast than crying it out on I think you probably mean control crying there, um, Farrison. Yeah, exactly. And so sleep training can be anything, anything from really subtle little steps of helping a baby sleep, you know, just getting into some routines and patterns and rhythms, right through to control crying or even crying it out. Crying it out is extinction. If you want to know what the, the brutal end of the spectrum is, it's called extinction. That's not what we do. That, to me, that isn't even sleep training. It's just ignorance, <laughs> but you know, um, if some you know some people like that, that's up to them. Um, but that's exactly far as in the point of this entire life, which is to break the taboo of the term sleep training, and to actually realise it can be a lifesaver, absolute lifesaver, and to know you know what it means. It's so broad, and we can't pin it down to sleep training means this because it means something different for every person. And the approach and the strategy that is gonna be right for somebody is gonna be different for the next person. As long as it's right for that person and that scenario and that child, you get children who are really, and you're really fractious and need a lot of hands-on and calming and attention. And you get children who are actually really confident, really confident, and they're okay being on their own for a bit. And actually they're just overstimulated and need a little bit of space. Is it? It's got to be um, the right thing for the right person, which is why sleep training can be such a broad thing. Um, I'm stuck with my ten month old. I'm also stuck, but with my nine month old. So we've got nine and ten month olds. Yeah, that's what we're here for, helping the people who are stuck and can't figure it out on their own. He wakes my other two children and everyone's awake at four in the morning. Ouch! 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 That is too early. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. Just shows how people can manipulate research, I guess. <laughs> you're, you're right, it's Farrison. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff. I don't think there are any sleep training techniques that don't involve any crying, are there? <laughs> well, um, oh, hang on. I'll press something. Um, there, there are people who say that they have a sleep training solution that doesn't involve any crying. Yes, there are people who will claim that. However, I don't see how anyone can claim that. I think they're trying to sell an impossible dream because if you have a human baby, <laughs> it's going to cry, <laughs> period. Simple. Babies cry and young children cry. In fact, everyone cries. <laughs> we cry because we want to communicate something, or we're emotional, or we're tired, or we're frustrated, or we're hungry, or we're dirty. I'm talking about babies now. But you know, we, we, um, 
crying is meant to happen. Babies are supposed to cry. If your baby isn't crying, I'd be worried. So if somebody says, oh, we'll sleep train your baby with no crying. How? How are we going to mute, mute the baby? I don't get it. I don't get it. And if it's like, no, no, Lucy, what they're saying is we won't use techniques that involve crying. Um, that suggests then that there are techniques that are um, purposely using crying. See, now I would, my argument on that would be um, that babies cry, they cry to communicate something, we soothe, we reassure them. They may stop crying, they may not stop crying. As long as you're doing your bit and you're doing your role, it's fine. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.